Welcome to day one of building in public. So essentially what I'm going to be doing for this new series is I'm going to be building an application. In this case, it's going to be a business directory website where you can find different businesses such as restaurants, hotels, places to stay, things to do within a country. For this case study, we'll be building a business directory for the country of Guyana. Guyana is a very small country, but it's been exploding in tourism and in economic growth within the past couple of years. It's actually the fastest growing GDP in the world. So I'm going to be building a business directory where people that are visiting Guyana for the first time or even people in Guyana can find different restaurants, different places to stay, uh, different things to do that's going to be beyond TripAdvisor. It's going to be beyond what you can find on Expedia. It's going to be actual local businesses that the locals enjoy that you can go and really get an authentic feel and taste of the country. So that is the idea of what we want to build. And we've already went ahead and built sort of a version one. Now I'm going to be rebuilding this from zero so you can see the full build because we ran into some issues with our first build. But this is essentially what we're going to be building again. So as you can see, you can filter by restaurants, you can filter by um, types of cuisine, price ranges, uh, feature and specialties. And as you can see, this all works, right? So let's go ahead and remove our filters. And once you click into the actual website, you can see a description of that website and you can go ahead and visit the website, right? So very good, very intuitive, easy to use, and everything is all connected and very easy to navigate. You can also list your own business. Well, that is the feature in which we will be developing, listing your own business, creating blog posts, um, being able to upvote or being able to leave comments on these actual listings itself and adding images. So those are going to be the things in which we'll be creating in our new build. But this is to give you an idea of what we're going to be trying to build. Hopefully I can build something better than what we've built the first time. In order to build this, I use Bolt.new, which is an AI powered developing tool. And I use Superbase for the backend and I use Netlify to deploy the application. So the front end is going to be built using Bolt, the backend is Superbase, and the um, website will be hosted on Netlify. Now, a big disclaimer is that I am not a developer by any means. I'm more of a marketer, but I wanna show you guys that with these amazing technology that we have at this time, anyone can go out and build an app like this. You can build any app that you have that you any idea that you have in your mind, you can bring it to life. So the way that I approach building is I use ChatGPT in combination with using Bolt.new. So I don't necessarily just tell Bolt, hey, create this and that. I start by using O3 because I think it's the best model. And I tell the AI what I want to build. I tell the AI that I'm using Bolt and I tell the AI exactly what I want to do. And it builds me out a plan of action that I need to take. And then I take that into Bolt and tell Bolt what to do. So by combining these two amazing sort of platforms or AI, it reduces the errors that I have. And essentially I have a backup developer, which let's say would be ChatGPT's O3. And if I run into any issues, I have ChatGPT O3 chat that knows everything about my, my program or my applications and I can ask any questions or any roadblocks I may run into so I can always solve any issues that come up. If I just do everything in Bolt, then I have to go over to ChatGPT and ChatGPT may not have all of the context of the build. So that's why you can see that this chat is huge because again, it has all the information about my app and I can simply ask it any questions or um, it has the context that it needs. So that's how I would set up and start your development. Another trick that you can do is once you're building your application and you're at a decent point, you can then tell the AI, you can use discuss mode to ask the AI, what did we do to get to this point? Create me a prompt that I can use to replicate this build. And once you get that prompt, that prompt is now what you can use to then recreate another application that's similar to the one that you're creating. But that's all a little bit more advanced. So let's go ahead and get started with the action item for today. So again, what I did was I gathered all the information from my previous build and I told the AI to then let's go ahead and I'll start from day zero and start from scratch creating this business directory website. And here is our high level roadmap versus prep. Then we're gonna scaffold schema plus RLS 
data seed, design system, directory pages, user flows, engagement, blog and news, admin UI, and then we're going to harden it. Okay. So it takes us through all of the different phases in which we're, we can use. So now we're going to go with phase zero to prop, which is essentially emptying or Git repo or creating a clean repo in Bolt. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy over all of this, right? We're going to copy it all over. Head back over to Bolt. We're going to start a new project, completely new. And we're going to go ahead and run that into Bolt. Building applications with Bolt is definitely a learning process and it takes a little bit of time. So have some patience when you're getting started. For example, we just put in the first um, little thing there and we are already getting um, issues, right? So once you get an issue, there's two main ways in which you can sort of overcome that issue. You can either just tell the AI to attempt the fixed, or what I can do is I can copy over this issue and then paste that into our chat box here with ChatGPT and ask it to solve that issue. So what I like to do is, so for example, if it's a small issue like this, you can simply tell it to do so, and it pretty much solves that issue pretty quickly. So phase zero is done. Now let's do phase one. Now, while that is spinning up, I'm actually going to go over to Superbase, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new project. So this is going to be, you can choose any password in which you like, and then we're going to go ahead and create a new project. So this is going to cost me, I think, $10. It's fine. To sign up for Superbase, it's very easy. Just head over to superbase.com. I believe you can get a free plan and work with that if it's just your first project and what you're doing. But if you're doing multiple projects, then you would need to go ahead and um, get a paid plan. But it's definitely worth it. And because of how easy it is to integrate with Bolt, I definitely recommend it because Bolt can then go ahead and create all of your databases, all of your tables in the back end of Superbase. So you don't have to necessarily do any heavy lifting yourself. Okay, so phase one is done, then, or sorry, phase zero. So now let's go ahead and do phase one. Okay, now let's see if this is going to work. This is where you're usually going to run in some, into some issues because what we're doing here is scaffolding. So we're using Astro, Tailwind, Netlify, and zero DB calls yet. So the reason why we're using Astro is because if you're using React, which is essentially every single page is going to be coded with the React language, then Google doesn't index those pages very easily. Google doesn't really like React pages. It likes pages that are static and it likes pages sort of built using Astro. Now, this is something that I learned because I tried to build a couple of different applications before and they did okay on Google, but essentially you can't use React. You need to use something like Astro, which will create static pages, HTML pages, that will actually rank and be indexed by Google. Okay, so it looks like we're moving pretty good here. The scaffolding has been created. Okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo. The only thing that's concerning here is that we should see Hello Ghana Hub. That is what I do not see here. So let's see, it did do everything. So Netlify, so it did do everything. So I think we're okay to go because that was the last thing that they had to do. Okay, so let's do phase two. Okay, so GANHUB 4.0 is now, the project has now been span or it's been, it's working. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm actually going to connect. So GANHUB 4.0, and we're gonna connect that with our super Sorry, not our super base with our bolt.new. So it's connected to super base. So anything that we do in terms of super base, it's just going to uh, automatically create that for us. Now let's see what it's doing here. So it's the goal is every environment local and verify spins up with the same locked data model and initial seed rows for categories and cities. Now this is important because I ran into an issue before where on the preview of bolt, I will have everything there, but when I deploy it to Netlify the actual website, it didn't have all of the things that I had on my preview website. But as you can see, in terms of this UX and this design, I really, really like this. Like it's sad for me to actually go ahead and have to redo all of this, but I think it's going to be better. I had a big issue with the blogs. I had a big issue with people being able to submit profiles. It just wasn't working. But in terms of the actual directory, 
I think it's amazingly good. And it's really, really good too, especially when you um, when you use it on mobile. But as you, and as you can see, all these filters work, right? They work. And once you click into every single one of these view details, right? That's its own unique profile and it looks really, really good. But let's head back over, let's stay on task. So this is checkpoint phase two. Okay, so I'm gonna paste this in here. So this is phase two database schema. So this is really for Superbase. So what I'm gonna do, I'm also now going to paste in, very, very important here. We're gonna head back over to our project settings here. I probably will have to blur out some things here, but we're going to then enter in our super base URL. That's what I just copied. I don't think that's the URL actually. Let me go back over here. That is not, that's a project ID. So go to data API and then copy over your URL. And then we're gonna do the same. We're gonna head back over to API keys. We're gonna copy over our Anand, Anand public URL. And then we're gonna give it also the service role key just in case it needs it. So essentially we're giving it everything that it needs there. Um, so hopefully we're gonna get back a built application with no errors. I'm a little bit worried that we didn't see the hello Guyana hub, but again, let's let's just roll through and we'll see how we do. So we need to add in our data base schema setup and our seed taxonomy data. Okay, great. So the database migrations have been applied. And if we actually go into Superbase and we go to database, or let's go to tables maybe. As you can see, these tables are already been added, which is pretty cool. So automatically, they've went ahead and created these things for us. Okay, so now let's head back over to ChatGPT. Yep, it did that, I believe. Homepage drop down now shows categories. So my main issue here is that we don't see any preview. And that is worrisome because it's telling me that we should see. So let me just... Oops. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tell it. So we're going to put it in discussion mode because it's always better when you think before you speak. As with humans, it's the same thing with AI. So I ran the development server for your web application. It's done that, but still nothing. So I'm going to ask now ChatGPT. I did phase two but my preview on Bolt is not showing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search the web, not create image. I'm gonna search the web because it's gonna give me some more up-to-date information here. So what I did was I refreshed Bolt.new. I tried to deploy it, but still nothing. And when I refresh it, some of the dependencies did not install properly. So I believe that's the reason why we were not getting um, the preview. So just look out for things like that. If it doesn't install properly, then you have to install the dependencies once again. Okay, so I got it to work. I had to do a couple of different things. So you guys can keep this in mind if you run into this same issue. So first I just pasted an issue onto ChatGPT 03. I asked it, you know, it's not showing up the preview. It gave me a couple of things to do. So I popped that in didn't work. So then it said, um, if it's not working, put in this filter into terminal. So just copy that over and put that into terminal. So terminal is going to be the terminal right here. You can add a new terminal or use bolt and paste that in click enter. And it's going to give you a bunch of um, errors if they are errors. So it did give me a bunch of errors. So I went through those errors and I was able to sort of fix that issue. Um, so now here's the preview. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy over what I would what I had to do. Right? I'm just gonna try to copy over as much as I can so that ChatGPT is now updated and it knows what I had to do. So that it knows like if we introduce anything new, it knows what we introduced. So I had to make these changes and actually what I'm going to do at the same time, I'm going to copy this over. 
I'm a little worried about those words and it looks like it's in a different language, but the preview is up. How does this look? Right? So think of it as you have bold, you have two full-time developers. You have bold, which is creating your actual front end and developing your application. And then you have ChatGPT, which is sort of your consultant as well. So full, two full-time, very, very experienced um, developers on your team that's going to help you build out this application. So ChatGPT says the scaffold is live, which means Astro boots with no runtime errors. Da -da -da. The funky characters is just a UTF-8 double, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we're good to go. So I'm going to end today's video here because I think this was pretty long, but to confirm... Um, what we were able to do is we were able to do phase zero and phase one. We're able to set up our um, super base setup. We're able to set up our core of the application. We're able to install our dependencies and we have a preview here. And the next video, we're going to move on to phase three, which is going to centralize the super base queries, show categories and CDs on the home page and confirm they appear locally and on Netlify, which essentially is our website. That's where it's going to be hosted on. So I'll let you guys enjoy today's video. If you learned something new, let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and I will see you in the next video. Take care.